This is Twit. Samsung Galaxy S9, the S9 Plus, both announced this weekend. Actually, we had live coverage. Father Robert Balasser and Ron Richards uh, were doing that here at Twit. So if you want to find that, you can find the Twit specials at twit.tv slash specials. Uh, but you probably already know all about the device, and we'll tell you all about it if you don't. Similar design to the S8. Actually, from the front, it looks very, very similar. Uh, 5.8 inch and 6.2 inch Super AMOLED panels. Fingerprint sensor that's relocated on the back so that it's not awkward anymore. Maybe a little small for my taste, but whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. Uh, dual camera on the plus size, and it's actually a vertical array instead of a horizontal array. Snapdragon 845, so good to see that processor kind of finally hitting handsets. Uh, 4 gigs and 6 gigs of RAM, 3,000 and 3,500 milliamp hour battery, IP68 rated, uh, and on and on and on. I haven't even got to the camera yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and stop there because, Daniel, I have a feeling you might know more than I do about this topic. Mm -hmm. I basically have literally when I was going to sleep, I didn't have it. Uh, when I've woken up, I actually have a... <gasps> Galaxy S9. That's so it? I, I have basically, while you've been talking, I've actually been setting up a, a, a new Galaxy S9. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you went to sleep and you I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning and you had a, a phone shipped to you. That's Did that's you give up a Samsung tooth? Santa. Did the tooth fairy visit? <laughs> yeah. The Samsung I would probably fairy. give up a tooth to get this. <laughs> All right. So, um, did you get any hands on at at the event? Were you at the event that they that they held? Yeah. So we we had the the whole presentation uh, which Samsung put off, and then obviously the the demo area opened, and every tech journalist in the place made a beeline for the devices. So, yeah. as you guys know, the demo rooms are usually what we describe as pure hell. So yeah, trying to get their hands on, yeah, you, you get maybe five, 10 minutes with them and, and, and you can sort of have a play around with them. But but like I said, I mean, the design of it is, is pretty much the S8. So if you've held an S8, you, you're very much going to be very familiar with the design. The, the main thing is that move of the fingerprint sensor to the bottom of the camera, which makes it much easier to actually get your finger to and you don't tend to then put your finger onto the camera which is what a lot of people tended to do with the both the note 8 and the the s8 so that's a much much improved design so yeah and then it's going to come down to obviously the camera which is the big tagline for the event yeah, I mean, they, they prefaced the event by, you know, dropping yeah a, a tagline in their promotional video or their promotional kind of poster or whatever, um, specifically about the camera. So you knew it was going to be focused and you're like, well, what are you, what's, good, what's new? Is it, is it just that it has the dual cameras? But it actually has a mechanical adjusting uh, aperture, right? Talk about that a little bit. What, how does that work? Well, it basically um, offers the... It, it's it's more that in certain circumstances it will use the lower apertures or so it can actually open up and get a lot more light in. So the improvement in the low light effects has been just um, absolutely amazing. We did some testing um, beforehand where they actually took us into a room which we basically couldn't see what was in there. And the amount of light that it can capture from that was looked almost like it was daylight. And it was able to pick up details on things in that like uh, say we had the, there was a small plant in the background. You could actually pick up the individual leaves on that, wow. and then of course if it doesn't need that, it, it can then use like the f two point four aperture, which basically allows it to get a better shot in that certain light. When obviously in great light, every camera can take a great shot, and basically yeah, it's it just looks great. So it's, it's really the reimagined sort of thing, and I'm I'm very impressed with the limited, very limited time that we've had with it. Not only that, slow motion capture, uh, 960 frames per second at 720p. That's kind of ridiculous. Is this the first phone that's, it, that's it, doing it that, at that that rate, no, at that resolution? Um, or is that Sony? The, the first one was actually Sony last yeah. year with the Xperia XZ Premium. They uh, launched with the 960 frames per second. It did something like 0.2 of a second, which stretches it out to about five seconds or something like that. Sony then stepped it up this year, and we'll talk about that later. Um, it's now full HD, so sort of one up on that sort of thing but this is very nice to start with i mean sony's samsung's using their new isocell cameras um which is sort of something that's different on different parts of the world but they're getting more into the camera technology and basically this is a good start right out of the gate yeah 
Yeah, no kidding. But uh, user experience? What about user experience? Do we have anything different with the camera interface, the app? Um, is there anything new about that well, that's sort of noteworthy? Of course, yeah, the AR. Noteworthy. I know we're going to go there. <laughs> We are going to go AR emoji, and that's basically one of the fun things. Um, so one of the big things is obviously AR emoji. You can basically capture your face. It will create a whole heap of AR stickers that you can use in all your chat apps and things like that. But the, the key thing is the AR emoji. So you can actually export uh, different characters, which are, which are then set up as you. So you can be a bunny and all sorts of things. And they've also tied into a couple of things with uh, Disney. So there's a, they're actually doing uh, some Disney AR emoji and stuff like that. So we're, we're going to be getting into that a little bit later on when I've had a bit more chance to play with the AR emoji. But it's it's a, it's a fun feature. Um, it, it's more of a whole body thing than, than what we thought we were going to get with where it was going to be sort of an emoji ripoff. So it's, 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 it's something that Samsung's looked at and gone, well, the whole body sort of thing, you can sort of shrug and give sort of gestures and things like that. And, and it sort of adds that extra element when you're sort of trying to communicate in these days. Because, I mean... We've gone from typing and texting with the short codes to now using emoji, and now we're into AR emoji, which is the big thing. And it's it's sort of fun. The the limited time I had playing around with my AR emoji at the event uh, was 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 actually a lot of fun. And I think a lot of people are going to really dig what they've sort of done here. Yeah, it looks it looks like a, a fun kind of enjoyable thing. You know, I hadn't really notice the whole body scan is it actually scanning what you're doing with your body or is it just moving it's not your no it's it's sort of just animating a bit of the body so okay. that, that's sort of what it's yeah it's it's basically your face um and then it's sort of but yeah they're so weird looking though like it's it, I, I get a weird feeling <laughs> looking at them they're, they're like they're like one step beyond cartoon closer to real but still not quite it's it's like that a. Uh, what is that? Uh, oh man, Pol Polar uh, Polar Express. Did you ever see that movie, uh, where all of the, uh, yes. the virtual people like this yeah. is that uncanny valley sort of thing? And I get that from these things in, in a strange way. Yeah, it, it it's a little bit unsettling the first time you use <laughs> it. it. Actually, it's <laughs> the right way to put it. Um, okay, so this I mean it sounds sounds like an interesting phone. I'm going to be getting the S9. I think I'm waiting for pre-orders, which start in a couple of days. You can pre-order pre-order on March 2nd. Releases on March 16th. Unlocked for seven nineteen ninety nine here in the US or eight thirty nine ninety nine if you go for. That's the a plus. lot of money. It could be more though. I mean, that's not that's not a grand, which is what you're looking at with some of these top line top of the line phones. Well, the Note. I guess the next Note will probably be up in that territory. So, mm. yeah. Well, that's the way we're tiering them now, right? Yeah. That's the way the phone companies are tier, or rather, the manufacturers are tiering them. We've got your regular tier, which is between six and eight, and then we've got your top tier, your iPhone tens, your Pixel two XLs your Note 8s for over 900. Yep, yep. So this would be the first tier. This would be the common ground. Everyone can get to this. We'll sell it unlocked. We'll sell it at every carrier. I'm just sort of not, I'm just having a really hard time getting, mustering up excitement over this phone because it just feels like more just iteration and nothing innovative. I just don't see AR emoji being... <laughs> Being an innovation that's worth the price bump. It's it's one of those things that you got to sort of make that decision. And quite frankly, if you if I was on a Galaxy S7, I'd even have problems uh, justifying the purchase price slope because the camera on something like the S7 was was just fantastic. So mm -hmm. in that sort of respect, there's no real reason to go for it. Um, Samsung has been supporting the S7 for a while. Maybe we'll get another feature update out of it. But I mean. It's a nice phone, and if you are in, in need for it, and there are certainly people out there that are still rocking in a, a Galaxy S4 and a Galaxy S5, to those people I say the S9 is definitely worth it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll totally, so to I mean, I definitely... It's getting, Sorry. I mean, we're at that point in, in sort of phones, aren't we, where, where it's getting hard to justify a yearly update cycle. I mean, it's even now getting hard to update, to, to justify a bi-yearly up, update. So it's if, if you have to update every two years, it's getting to that point now where the phones are just, if you've bought something that's really nice and high-end, it's hard to justify that cost. And 
I mean, the phones are just that good. So yeah, yeah it used yeah. to be that the camera was the reason, right? Like, yeah, I every, love everything yeah. about this phone, but it still takes horrible pictures, and that would be a reason for upgrading year after year is that that slight bump. And now that's great. That's great on many, you know, most phones. It seems like these days take pretty mm. darn great pictures uh, compared to what. But they so then, what one of those is? Things. Mm. So it's like, it's it basically one of those things that <laughs> Android, or, sorry, Android, Android cameras have finally actually reached that that maturity point where they're they're actually getting good, and it's yeah. starting to come down the range. So, so what used to be like a really high end feature in cameras is is now actually getting to the point where it's starting to enter the mid range. Yeah, so. yeah. Flow. I want to hear what uh, what Daniel thinks is sort of like the the big standout feature of the S nine. Like what. What is it going to hit? What is Samsung going to hinge on here? It's definitely the camera. I mean, it, it's definitely going to sell it for a lot of people, but the whole experience like, is actually pretty good. One of the things that we, we haven't talked about yet, um, which, which is a bit of a point that a lot of people have been stinging Samsung on, is Bixby. They've actually added quite a few features into Bixby, which which were quite interesting when they talked about them in the event. So it's going to be doing things like uh, incorporating the camera to do a lot of the AI stuff. So what we see with Google Translate, where it does the word lens, where it instantly translates on the fly, this, the Bixby is actually going to be able to do that. It's going to be able to recognize food and add the, the calorie content into your, your uh, Samsung Health app. It's going to be able mm. to recognize products and do stuff like that, which we saw on the Amazon Fire phone, which didn't quite work um and yeah so i mean obviously we're gonna have to do a bit of testing but if those features sort of start getting to be useful in bixby then i think a lot of people might actually start using bixby well i kind of want to talk about bixby too because the the landscape has really changed this year 2018 it's sort of a different it's a different look than it was mwc's past um, we didn't have such a big smart speaker category. We didn't have uh, we didn't have Amazon with its own device categories now with such like a robust mm -hmm. assist. Even this year, it's more robust than it was last year. It just seems like what is going to be a really big deal for Samsung going forward is not just iterating on a phone, but having this whole ecosystem that can match up to its competitors. Mm -hmm. And its competitors are, I think, now are Google and Amazon, not so much all the other Android and and the Android handset manufacturers, actually. So it's just like it just feels like this is just a small little part of a bigger picture that's going to unfold more throughout this year. Like this is a phone, but there's going to be more to this experience for the user than just the phone. And I definitely feel like Bixby is going to be the driver of that. I thought you were you were gonna say that it's all about the Dex Pad, the next uh, <laughs> Dex docking station. I mean, some people like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then this is another part of the announcement. Instead of uh, it being this big thing that you you dock the phone, you know, upwards, I guess it, it lays flat so it can be like a, a touch display for everything on the monitor. If Dex is your thing. It supports uh, external displays up to 2K resolution. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. There's a, there's a lot of that uh, happening, and particularly from, you know, Samsung's probably the shining example of that. Uh, and there are many others that are on that train as well.